Boo. Good evening gamers and welcome to the Spooktober special edition of The War. That is the weekly anime recommendation, the show where I go out, I watch a frick ton of anime, I throw out all the bad ones and I come back with one good recommendation for you, the viewer. So as you can see, I'm decked out in my Nanami drip in honor of Halloween. And yeah, today I just have like a spooky themed uh, war for you guys in honor of Halloween. So buckle up and we're going to get into it. Right, so the anime in question today is of course the spookiest anime of all time, rent a gr wait, wait a second, my script's wrong, my script's wrong. No, my script's not wrong, but we're not talking about the spookiest anime of all time today. We're talking about the second spookiest anime of all time, which is of course another. If you don't know anything at all about the show, it's essentially a murder, mystery, horror, school anime. I know that's kind of a mouthful, but it has elements of all those different genres in it. It has graphic violence and gore and deep depressing, like, spooky, like, music modes. And then it has murder mystery and lots of murder and lots of, like, yeah, I guess just violence and figuring shit out as you go along. And then it is a school anime, so it has all the school stuff, you know, like, the girls in their uniforms and whatever else, you know. So it, it really is a good blend of all three genres. And one thing I think the show does really well is it blends them all together almost equally. It's very nice. Um, so if you like any of those three shows, like any of those three types of shows, like school or murder mystery or horror, you'll definitely love this show. Very briefly to summarize the plot, essentially a limptic anime protagonist, very run-of-the-mill type of guy, moves to this small town in the middle of nowhere in rural Japan. He joins this new class, goes to a new school, and his classmates start immediately acting really fucking sus to him. Like, he'll ask them questions and they'll just be doing weird shit and he won't answer, like they won't answer his questions. So he gets really confused and instead of continually asking them and trying to figure it out himself, he meets this other girl, I call her Pirate Bitch because she wears an eye patch, and essentially him and Pirate Bitch form this little dynamic duo dream team and they run around town and essentially look for clues to solve the mystery. Really well done, and I know that may not be selling the show the best, the way I describe that, but it really gets things off to a good start, it gets things going, and what they do really, really well in the show is they keep the mystery elements going, kind of running in the background, while sort of the horror takes over, and horror kind of is injected in, like, all throughout, there's a lot of supernatural stuff going on, so you'll be watching an episode and something will happen and I'll be like on the edge of my seat, and it's one of those shows where every single episode ends on a cliffhanger, so you almost can't put it down. It's really good in that way. It's good or bad if you have a lot of stuff to do. It's kind of bad because you don't do anything but watch the show. I watched this whole show in like three days, I think. Um, but yeah, it's uh, pretty well done in that regard. I don't know. The thing I love the most about this show is the way there's very little plot armor on any of the characters except the most main characters, like the most central characters that does feel like they have a little bit of protection. But there'll be a character that you meet for a couple episodes and they do a bit of development in the character and the character doesn't really feel complete and then they'll just up and die on you. Like I remember the first character death completely blew me out of the water. Like if you watch this show, there's no way you will ever like see the first death coming. I was watching the show and I was thinking, okay, this is like a nice school anime, I can, there are some spooky parts to it, but at the end of the day, it's still a school anime, so they're not going to do anything too sus, right? And then the first, ep like, the first death hits, and I'm just like, what the frick did I just watch? Like, it's the kind of thing, it just blows you out of the water, and the characters, like, will die in the most random, bizarre, peculiar ways that you will never see coming. Um... I love it. It's so refreshing because there's some elements of a lot of anime that are very predictable. The deaths in this anime are not at all, and it's really nice. Another thing I absolutely love about another is the way they create the mood of like horror so perfectly. And it's a combination of a lot of things. Cause I was th I was thinking about it. I wasn't sure why it feels so creepy sometimes, but I think it's just a combination of a lot of things that just come together really, really well. Like, the foley is amazing. Like, if a character is sort of walking down a dark hall, you'll hear the footsteps like, padonk, 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 padonk. Like, you feel every single step on the creaky floorboards, right? The music, too. The music is so perfectly set to the mood. I mean, it's just kind of standard horror music, 
but it matches really, really well. Same with the color scheme. Like if they use sort of like a gray muted color scheme, it feels very depressing. Even the shots taken like in the sun somehow have a really depressing feel to them. And I don't know, I think it's, like I said, it's just a lot of things coming together all at once to create a mood. A lot of unity in that, um, like all the different things coming together. But it's really well done, and if you watch it, you'll see exactly what I mean. It feels like a horror, which is, you know, I guess what it is and what it's marketed as, so that's a good thing. Now, one thing I'm proud to report is another is an anime that has absolutely no fan service whatsoever, period. Oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah, so another has a beach episode, which pisses me off to no end. It's one of those things that I just grin and bear whenever I see it. I hate all like these tropey like little episodes that they kind of throw into anime just to be quirky, and they just kind of permeate through the whole genre. Like the beach episode is definitely my least favorite because you have the plot going, the plot's going really well, and then it's just like an excuse for a fuck ton of fan service, right? Next to the beach episode, there has to be like the baseball episode. That's like probably my second least favorite. Like. So Samurai Champloo had a baseball episode, I know Jujutsu Kaisen had a baseball episode, I know there are some others that have like a baseball episode. It just pisses me off to no end because it's just like an excuse to stop the story and just dick around for an episode and it really annoys me. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Yeah, another has basically no fan service until the beach episode. Like there are five or six episodes before the beach episode that I'm just like chilling. I was like really hyped because I was like, I guess there's no fan service in this. This is really great. And then I see that they're going to the beach. I'm like, fuck. I like, I know it's going to like kick in. So. There is a bit of fan service. Good news is, is it's limited just to kind of the beach arc, and then they go away from the beach, and there's not not any anywhere else in the show. So, decently conservative with the fan service, uh, but there is a little bit. So I have to I have to sort of throw in the warning flag um, to yeah let you know. So this brings me to my biggest critique of another, which is sort of a critique on the horror genre as a whole. I've noticed a lot of horror franchises do this, where they essentially what another does is it will take a character and because it's sort of a whodunit type of a mystery, they'll sort of throw in little red herrings because you're trying to figure out kind of who done it. They'll throw in like red herrings into, about each character saying, oh, this character could have done it or this character could have done it or this character could, could have done it, right? But if you think about it really hard, the little pieces of information they throw at you don't really fit with the character's like overall like arching like character arc, right? So it's just kind of a little jarring if you think about it in retrospect. Um, and I've noticed a lot of horror movies, like horror mystery movies do this, where they sort of drip feed you pieces of information to heighten the momentary tension and heighten the momentary, I guess, mood, right? An example of this is sort of, or I say an anti-example of this would be Stephen King's The Shining movie, right? Where I think Stanley Kubrick, he is a phenomenal filmmaker, he wanted to really tighten up and make it to where there weren't any sort of loose threads hanging out at the end. And The Shining isn't really a good horror movie. So I think this is sort of just embedded in the horror genre inherently, but it definitely drives me crazy because I'm a big fan of this, like, uh, what's his name? Christopher Nolan type of movie where everything's sort of tied up at the end with a clean bow. Another is isn't really like that. There are a lot of sort of dangling threads and things that they mention during the show that they don't really address. And it's fine if you don't think about it too hard, but it annoys me a little bit if I go back and think about it. I'm not going to give a specific example because it's hard for me to think of one without spoiling the show. Um, I think you get my drift, though. Right, so that brings me to my review of the show. So I'll start off with characters. I'm going to say characters are 3 out of 5. They weren't really the strongest. I think that's pretty typical for like a murder mystery horror type of a show where the focus is much more on the horror and the mystery elements than it is on the characters. The characters are fine. Like, the main character, who's kind of the narrator, he doesn't really have a whole lot of, like, character growth or character development. He's just kind of there to tell the story. So, yeah, the characters aren't really the strongest out of any anime I've ever seen ever. It's not like an Aaron Yeager moment where I'm, like, invested in every single detail, but they do fine for the genre. It's fine. So I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Pretty average. Um, in terms of fan service, I'm going to give that a 3 out of 5. Like I mentioned, there's a bit of fan service, but it's pretty limited to just one episode. And it's nothing super sexual. There's not any like the, like, you know, the, you know what I'm talking about, the sus, you, you know that sus shit I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so there's no, nothing like super like sexual. It's just kind of girls in bikinis, which it's an anime. What can you expect, right? Uh, in terms of originality of story, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5, just because I think it does the horror, murder, mystery, like school 
like genre really really well. I don't know of any other anime that really fit that vibe. I know there's ghost stories, but that's kind of a meme. And then there's uh, Angel Beats. I think Angel Beats, it's not really a horror, it's more of like a mystery type of like fantasy um, ghost anime. I don't know. Um, Angel Beats kind of fit that same genre for me, but I think another does it a lot better and it definitely gets that creepy feeling um, really, really well for me. So five out of five, origin very original story. Um, uh, what's the last? Oh, I can never remember the last um, animation. I can never remember. There's always one I can't remember in any of these videos. Um, animation, I'm going to give that a 5 out of 5 as well. I mentioned just how aesthetically pleasing it looks and how it fits the mood so perfectly. I think the animation is everything I wanted it to be. Like, every sunset looks amazing. Like, they do reflections off the surf of, surface of water. Really, really amazing. It looks like an UFO table work, honestly. I think UFO table gets those, like, reflections off the water really, really well. Gave me the same vibe. Very well done. There isn't a whole lot of, like, tense action because, you know, it's a school anime. But does the job perfectly for what it, you know, what it's really set up for. And I think the color scheme is oh, to die for. So, yeah, 5 out of 5 for animation. And, yeah, that's been my review of the show. I definitely recommend you watch it. It got me into the spooktober mood very, very well. And I think it could get you into that mood as well. So, please give it a watch. And thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you like me and you like my cute face, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. And to all my subscribers, basically I've gotten like 15 new subscribers in the last month. Absolutely insane. Like, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. You guys are so cute. I want to give you a kiss. But yeah, thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me when you give me those nice comments and you subscribe because sometimes it feels like I stand up here and I like speak to the camera. I feel kind of insane. Like my roommate on the other side of that wall there, he probably thinks I'm crazy. I don't know. He probably doesn't, but that's what I feel like sometimes. I feel like I... You know, I'm kind of crazy just talking into the ether, but whenever I see like likes and subscribes and comments on my videos, it makes me feel like I'm, you know, I'm talking to someone, which I, I hope I am. I'm trying to do this to be entertaining and to provide some value to you. Um, so if you feel like I do, please consider subscribing. And thank you so much to my subscribers who make me feel like I'm not stupid and useless. Anyway, so that's been all for this week. I hope you have a great Halloween and a great Spooktober, and I will see you gamers next week. Au revoir.